Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. Welcome to uh, Canadian Investing in the U.S. Uh, with Glenn Sutherland. This week, uh, I'm interviewing uh, an immigration attorney, actually the immigration attorney that helped me get my uh, E-2 visa, helped me uh, uh, have the ability, well, actually, we'll get into this, what some of the abilities of getting the E-2 visa and maybe why I wanted to do this, go through this whole process. She's going to be at our conference uh, September 14th, 2024 at the Toronto Airport, the Doubletree Hilton West. Um, so she'll be up there doing a speech. Um, if you're interested in getting a new two visa, you can poke your head around, ask some questions, get her, you know, exchange some details and, uh, and continue on with this process. Um, and you might find that it's a, a lot simpler than you might think. Um, and I, it was actually very simple for me because her team handled almost everything for me. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, Meta, if you want to give, start off by just giving everybody a bit of an introduction to yourself and then we'll, we'll go from there. Sure. So my name is Mena Maimoni. I'm the um, owner and managing attorney of Maimoni Legal. And yes, we were happy to help Glenn. So Glenn, thank you so much for having us here. And uh, we are a family run business, I guess you could say, a law firm. We help my mainly Canadians who want to, some want to escape the cold, escape the lifestyle and come down uh, to the sunny South Florida. We also start helping people go into Texas or any, you know, all 50 states. Or if you're an investor like Glenn and you just want to have opportunity to um, access certain loans or invest in the United States, we can help you as well. And so we primarily focus on E2 visas, even though we do offer a plethora of other services. And uh, here we are. So happy to be here. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. Um, maybe I'm going to start off with some of the reasons I went and got my visa, because a lot of people just uh, they think it's like um, most people think it's for immigration, right, uh, to live in the U.S., which it does give you that option. So, uh, Amena, if, uh, if when people are going to get uh, their E-2 visa in the U.S., a lot of people are looking at it for like immigration status. How long do you get to stay in the U.S. when you when you do this? Yeah. So typically they issue an initial five year visa. And you're able to renew that for two year increments after that, so long as your business is up and running and generating some revenue. Um, so that's typically the time time frame on that. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, so a lot of people don't know that, like, you know, the, why I went and did my visa or they misunderstood that I'm doing it for immigration because that is the most common way of doing this. So um I could have went and lived in the United States. And uh, for me, it's it's not where I want to be yet. Anyway, it gives me some options. But um, for me, um, one of the big things was American lending. Um, so even before I got my social security number, I there's many lenders that will do a combination if you have an E2 visa and an ITIN number, uh, and they would do American lending on that. Um, I was just talking to um, my CPA like literally 30 minutes before this and my uh, social security numbers, uh, he, he said, I have mail from you from the social security administration office. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so it, it finally showed up. They had to do a background check on me, bypassed everything. Um, so it wasn't as simple as whenever I went there that they would just hand it to me. They had to go mail yeah. stuff to Canada and double check stuff. Um, but anyway, I got, I got Sometimes mine now. It's quick and other times it drags on. It's really <laughs> Everyone tells me something different about that, but good thing is that you got it in the end. Yeah, and honestly, I didn't even need it to do uh, the lending that I was, my, the cash out refinances that I was working on. It, it wasn't a requirement. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't think about when they're for the visa is well, as a Canadian investing in the US, we have the ability to take advantage of both tax laws. So I might want to pay certain parts of income in Canada, certain parts of income in the US. And typically the easiest way to split that is between active and passive. Um, actually, you know what? On During the uh, conference, I'm going to get Ali to go right into details on how to split all this in taxes and income up. Um, but anyway, that's why I hire a professional. Um, but Basically, what we want to do is work with my Canadian account and my American account to figure out what the advantages are on both sides. And some of the advantages require active income in the United States. And it, what the hard part is, is to justify to Canada revenue that you are earning active income in the United States when you don't have a visa to actively work in the United States. 
So right. it, <laughs> so it's a catch 22. Um, if you ever get audited, um, it could lead to paying this all back, right? So I, I honestly want to work this the, the best I can, you know, and that's why I hire people to, to do all these things for me, because yes. they know way much better than Definitely me. Definitely need the right team to help support you. Otherwise, yeah. a lot of mistakes can be made along the way, as I'm sure you've seen. Oh, definitely. Um, uh, Meta, when people are, um, you know, getting their their visa, um, I think one of the most common questions that I'm asked is like, how long does this take? Is this like, uh, you know, years? Is this weeks? Is this months? Well, how long does this usually take somebody? So it really depends on the client. Okay, so if I have a client and they've already made the investment and they come to me and they're pretty well organized, and they're like we want to get this done sooner rather than later, we typically can turn it around for them in three to four months. Um, however, if somebody you know hasn't made an investment yet and they're really not in a rush, usually it's six months or more. So yeah. it really depends on the client. We'll work with them to kind of help and try to meet their deadlines. Um, although we are working with the U.S. consulate, so sometimes, you know, we can't really predict exactly when things would happen, but we do try to be proactive and try to get everything done based on their timeline. Yeah. And, and typically, like whenever I was doing it, um, a lot of it was it, like the slowdowns were me. Um, to be completely honest, like it's going to be you are the slowdowns, like they're going to need paperwork, they're going to need business plans, they're going to need depending which kind of how you're trying to get your visa, right? Because there's different ways of doing it. Um, but they're going to need stuff, they're going to need, you know, right. accounting stuff, paperwork numbers, um, to fill all this stuff in. And uh, sometimes it takes your, your, you know, sometimes it's they're waiting on you, sometimes you're waiting on accountants, you're still waiting on other things. But a lot like, at least what I found is, um, I think from on my visa, um, when we sent it in to um, whatever you call it, the immigration people, the consulate, yeah. <laughs> the consulate um, I, I, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was like a, a month until I got my maybe month and a half until I got my interview, something like that. Mine was yeah. really quick. It has since actually sped up from there. Yeah. Um, right now, it's about two to three weeks. So, so they what we do is we apply, they process it, and they send us an email back to say, hey, um, send so and so client for an interview. And um, that usually takes about two to three weeks. And then the time that we are able to book the next interview is about the same. So a week or two. So yeah, you're right on that. Okay. Yeah. So I, it was actually pretty smooth. I kept track of all the interview questions that were asked uh, <laughs> for anyone who's, who's curious. Um, but anyway, um, for um, a lot of people who listen to my show, they're real estate investors. Um, and uh, I know the common question when they talk to an attorney about immigration is some of them will say that it's possible to get it um, with real estate. And some of them will say it's not possible with real estate. Um, what do you say to those people whenever you get that question? I recently had a phone call from someone who listens to the podcast. What they told me was that they'd sent money to a contractor. The contractor basically ran away with their money and didn't complete the job. Since I hate to hear about this happening to people. So because of this, I, I just created a video uh, with a bunch of common mistakes that Canadians make. Sometimes it's because they're new to investing and sometimes it's just they're new to US rules or US regulations people can go through it and ideally try to make way fewer mistakes because I don't want to see anyone else lose their money. If you're interested in this video, go to a Canadian investing in the USA.com slash mistakes. I hope this helps some people. Uh, back to the podcast. Well, it's definitely possible. It's just all in the way it's structured. So yes, real estate can be used. And, um, but what really needs to be demonstrated and shown is that there's a legitimate business uh, behind that. So one example might be that you're going to set up a property management company. So you're going to put everything in place to start up that company. Maybe you're going to have a location, you're going to maybe furnish the office, uh, maybe you have signage and marketing material, you have a website, maybe you're like Glenn, and you have videos and, and, <laughs> and following. And then the real estate is a tool that you're going to add on to that to operate that business where maybe you're going to use it as short term rental and you can maybe show that there's going to be a portfolio of properties that you're going to add on to that. So um, it not people often get it confused. They think just buying a home will do it. It can't stop there. It has to be an actual business um, in the making, basically. 
<laughs> That's a good answer. With this, we're going to do another interview uh, coming up where we're going to go into a lot more detail. Um, if you're interested in coming and hearing her speak, she'll go into the details of what the visa, what, what will work, what won't work. Uh, I'm not sure what all is in her plan, um, but we're going to talk about E2 visas and uh, she'll be around for a little bit. So you might be able to uh, pick her brain about what's going on. But uh, do come join us uh, September 14th at the uh, Toronto Airport Hilton. Um, and, uh, um, I'm sure she's going to have a ton of knowledge and, uh, at least put your mind at ease. So you'll know that as a Canadian, if you do want to go live in Florida or Texas, usually it's the warm States that people pick. Um, but if you do want to do that, um, there is options to get down there. Um, is there anything else I uh, should have asked you before we go? No, I'm excited to meet you all. And another thing I'd like to add is that I don't just do immigration. I also do estate planning and business law. And so Ooh. I can help um, with asset protection. If you are going to go in and buy, you know, a number of rental properties or invest your money in the United States, it's essential that you have those properties owned either in the name of an LLC and a trust, or you structure it properly to protect it from creditors, probate, whatever it may be. And then the business law aspect is if you're going to actually be buying an existing business, I can help facilitate the closing, I could help with negotiations, reviewing contracts. So I've really created a one stop shop here of yeah, down to the United States, all the legal means. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't even know you did all those that stuff. So yeah. Um, maybe maybe we could talk at the the conference a little bit about trusts too because that's honestly something I've been interested in doing myself and I've never done it. Um, Very important. We'll have a side conversation as well. <laughs> Very important. Very important. Anyway, yeah. thank you for coming on the show. I, I appreciate you this so much. Um, I they appreciate you coming down to, or coming up, not down, coming up to Toronto. Um, and I look forward to actually meeting you in person. Yeah, me too. Thanks again. That was a nice video. Bye!